Hello and welcome to the GTN Show. Yeah, we're building up to the PTO European Open in Ibiza this week, so we've got loads to chat about in today's show. And even James, you're heading out there. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> For the race. Oh yeah, that too. Ah, looks like a stack field. So we're actually gonna run through some of our predictions for that race. Yikes, yeah. Um, also, we have the Olympic Games and the 70.3 World Championship courses released. We've got lots to discuss there, as well as some rather interesting aero tech. Let's start the show. All right, kicking off the show as we normally do with some reacts, things we've spotted on social media, on the internet this past week. Uh, first one, and quite a nice one actually, from Kamut, uh, linked with Trash Free Trails. Um, they had 111 attendees over the course of the weekend collecting trash on their local trails. I'm not entirely sure where this photo is from, um, but it looks pretty epic wherever they are. Apparently they collected 12,363 items, a total of 437 kilograms of trash removed. That's phenomenal, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's everyone carrying a fair amount of trash yeah. down from the trail. It's uh, impressive work, yeah. Yeah, I do actually sometimes when I'm out running, I do, I know it sounds odd, but I do go and collect trash. Some virtue signaling going out. Do you really, Mark? I do actually, I do. <laughs> not, not the stuff you left there on the way out, yeah. no? <laughs> Yeah, on the way back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I anyway. did that on the way back. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, there are uh, quite a few people heading to Ibiza, as we've already mentioned, including myself. Yeah, uh, and we saw this one from Jan Fredeno, which is quite interesting because last year I was talking about the two goats, so Jan Fredeno and Alistair Brownlee. They both have a bit of a reputation for getting injured uh, lately, and uh, they've actually both poked fun at each other over this. So Jan said, Laying down the finishing touches, almost time to wrap myself in cotton wool. Have fun and a safe weekend, everyone. And then Alistair Brownlee uh, posted his one and saying the PTO Europe, European Open is almost here. Excited to tour the line next week with so many great athletes in Ibiza. To which Jan replied, I just ordered a family pack of cotton wool to wrap up and feel free to follow suit. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're both wrapping themselves in cotton wool. Uh, and then... Uh, Alistair posted again and said, time to wind down into the race week after a solid weekend at Jan Fredeno, past the cotton wool. <laughs> so I guess those two are wrapped up and ready to go to Ibiza. And yeah, fingers crossed they're both there on the start line and ready to race because that will definitely make for a big race. Yeah, we'll be discussing more on that in just a moment and our predictions and who we think will be the favourites there. Uh, we also spotted that Gwen Jorgensen um, was doing a local road race, cycling race uh, this weekend and won. So she's clearly in good cycling form. So coming back from just a pure running um, focus, she's now back into triathlon and clearly just going full out it really. Yeah, on the road to Paris 2024. More about Paris 2024 coming up too. And then there was this throwback from Cat Matthews. Cat uh, Matthews obviously just recently won I'm in Texas and heading over to long distance world champs this weekend. Uh, and she put a throwback from when she won the European middle distance champs uh, in her first pro season in 2019 and an honor to represent great britain obviously her name wasn't matthews back there a lot easier to fit rye on your on your trash suit <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah again we'll discuss more on that in a moment we've got loads of athletes heading out to ibiza so um, if you're following some pro athletes you'll probably see your feeds littered with photos and videos of athletes enjoying ibiza um, as James will be yeah. in just Abitha a few spam time. incoming. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to put any of the nightclub ones out. But yeah. Anyway, uh, also, I spotted this one. Uh, it is old news. It was um, from 2021. It was the World Swimming Champs uh, in Abu Dhabi short course pool being built, a purpose-built indoor pool. I hadn't seen this before, and it's basically a time-lapse of them creating this pool, and it's phenomenal. I mean, look at this. You can put arena games anywhere now. You just whack one of these up in, in wherever you like. Yeah. Arena games coming to a arena near you any, any, any minute now. Maybe that's our next GTM project in your garden. We can do it. Um, yeah. put, up a, put up a pool in the, in the field behind my house. That'll be a good idea. Jody be pleased with that. 50 meter pool. Yeah, my <laughs> wife definitely won't say no. <laughs> Okay, on with the try news. And last week was absolutely taken over with the news of Colin Chartier and his failed drugs test. Now, I think everything has been said there that can be said. Of course, we would like to hear and know a little bit more behind it, but I think we're going to have to move on. But we were awaiting a response from the PTO and 
their action and how they're responding to this, of course. Yeah, I'm not sure everything has been said. Things are going to come out still, I hope. Uh, but for now, the PTO has put out a statement saying, Chartier has been immediately suspended from the PTO membership pending the outcome of the investigation. We can confirm that Colin was tested in the week before the PTO US Open on Sunday the 19th of September 2022 using a dried blood spot, as is usual at all PTO Tour races, and then a urine test after the race. Both samples were analyzed for prohibited substances, including EPO, and were found to be negative. It goes on to say, as a result of Chartier's immediate suspension from the PTO, his name will be removed from the current PTO world rankings. He was ranked 14th at the time. Uh, and the ongoing investigation will seek to establish what other sanctions may be required. I imagine this includes uh, going after the money he won and various other things. But like we say, we don't really have any more news. And uh, I think we're just going to move swiftly on mm -hmm. to some more exciting news, which is some courses have been unveiled for some of the biggest races coming up. Yes, so we've got the 70.3 World Championship course and the Olympic Games course revealed. Of course, many of you aren't going to be doing the Olympic Games, but it's still interesting. It's going to be very exciting. So first, let's take a quick look at the 70.3 course, which is obviously going to be taking place in Lati, Finland, on the 26th, 27th of August. Yeah, the race starts with a swim, of course, and it's only... <laughs> three turns on the whole swim. A left turn, a right turn, and another right turn, and you're done. It's a, a pretty much point-to-point -point swim, which is interesting. You've got to swim through a few, uh, past a few jetties and piers, uh, and swim straight in. I think it's going to be like a straightforward swim. You don't have to worry about too much uh, of a, a washing machine there. And it's exiting into, essentially, they call it like an arena within the harbour. And I do think this is where somewhere Lati is going to be really exciting for the venue, because they're going to have to essentially shut the town down. So everyone's probably going to be there. money as well because they can't go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. And you're going to have a fantastic atmosphere. As you've, you know, we've all raced at places like this before, like Haugesund in Norway. They just, everyone just gets stuck in and enjoys it. Yeah, the advantage of having it in a small town where you, everyone can get involved. And I think it's going to be a great atmosphere. Yeah. They then go out onto a single loop bike course of uh, 90 Ks through the rolling countryside. It's Nothing really too much to, to speak of here that's going to scare you or anything. But there are a few punchy climbs, including a pretty nasty one with about 5Ks to go. So, uh, yeah, you're going to need something left in your legs for that. Oh, that's really going to hurt. And then it's out onto the run. And you actually do a little loop through a stadium. Yeah, the they say it goes indoors, whether that's just a stadium that's outdoors or it is fully indoors, but that's pretty cool. So you do that pretty much straight away out of transition or more or less. And then out of there into a long climb and then once you reach the top of that a long gradual descent and then all over again yep two laps of that looks like it's going to be a fun and exciting race and hopefully worthy of the world champs uh i'm definitely looking forward to watching that even if we're not going to that one yeah but then there's another course that's been released this week and that is quite interesting in fact it's pretty epic, I think. Yeah, so the Olympic Games, which is obviously going to be taking place around the 30th, 31st of July. Um, I mean, to be honest, if you were to ask me to make up and build my dream triathlon course in Paris, or in fact, in the world, it would probably look something like this. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. I mean, triathlon in the Olympics has a, a bit of a history of actually showcasing the venue, like Hyde Park in London. Mm. In Sydney, it was right by the Opera House. It's a... They've done it again here in Paris, and it's right in the centre. I mean, they could very easily have put it out in the suburbs where it's a lot more logistically easy to deal with, but they haven't. They've gone right in the middle. Yeah, and they do have a bit of experience here, having done, they've you know, got the French Grand Prix racing, which is very popular, and it's big over in France, and they have done it in the middle of France, it's in the middle of Paris before. So it's kind of been tried and tested many times before. So they have literally a floating pontoon positioned at the base of Pont Alexandre Trois Bridge. Um, and that's just along from the Eiffel Tower. So you'll be able to see the Eiffel Tower at the swim start. Uh, for the individual men and women, the swim will consist of one larger lap of 910 meters, followed by one slightly shorter lap, 590 meters, involving what looks like obviously an Australian exit as they normally do. So you'll yeah. be able to see where everyone places. And then, it's quite exciting, is the athletes have to jump out and then run up 32 steps to T1, which is a first for the Olympic <laughs> Games. Yeah, <laughs> that is interesting. And then they're gonna mount their bikes and do seven laps of a course that actually goes across the Champs-Élysées including the cobblestones, which is interesting. Uh, it's, it's not the most technical course ever. Uh, it's only got, I think, seven right angle turns and one dead turn. So it's not the most technical course, but the cobblestones are going to be interesting, especially because 
let's face it, you can't really practice on the cobblestones on the mm. Champs Elysees before race day, <laughs> can you? Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely, I'm not sure who that actually suits, but it's going to be interesting on the, on the bike. And then they're off for the run, which yeah. is four laps of two and a half Ks. Yeah, again, in the heart of Paris, taking in some of the most iconic and beautiful avenues in Paris, in the world, really. Um, so just a phenomenal course. What's your thoughts on this then? Does this play into anyone's hands? I, I, I honestly can't tell at this point. I mean, with the, with the, the cobblestones definitely play into the, sh- the stronger barkers, but then it's not the most technical course. There's not mm. a whole lot of twists and turns and dead turns uh, that really play into a, a strong barker's hands. The swim is going to be slightly up current one way and slightly down yeah. current the other way, which is definitely going to be important as far as where you are and whose feet you're on, etc. So you do need to know about that. Uh, I don't I- really know. I think, um, I mean, Hayden Wild's fantastic at running up steps, I've seen, so that's probably where it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, the, that's going to be one or lost. You heard it, yeah, Mark's, Mark's made the call over, over a year out. It's going to be one or lost on the stairs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we do actually have a Paris test event coming later this year, so we'll be able to see the athletes racing on this very course, and we'll be able to have a better idea of what's going to come in a year's time at the Paris Olympics. You can see all the athletes on the uh, step trainer thing in the gym. <laughs> on the stair machine. Stair yeah, machine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now it's time for What the Tech, and some new tech this week. Stages Cycling and Look have co-developed a new indoor cycling pedal. So it's a premium indoor cycling pedal that on one side you have the Stages, you have a Look Delta cleat, which you can partner with a Stages platform and fit any shoe on and the other side you have an SPD cleat and so therefore you can use it on an indoor bike without having to constantly change the pedals every time you someone else wants to use it. Now this is actually something that Mark and I do all the time. We're constantly searching the office for an 8mm Allen key to change the pedals on the indoor bikes or the Wahoo kicker bike. Uh, So this pedal system is supposed to solve that problem and you'll be able to fit anything on it. Uh, Ironically I don't think you can actually fit a Shimano uh, SPD cleat on it. The SPD mountain bike cleats on one side, the Look Delta on the other side, and then obviously you put that Stages indoor cycling platform on, then you can put any flat shoe on there. Uh, so yeah, it does solve a lot of issues. Uh, it's, a, it's a new partnership by them and yeah, pretty innovative. So you don't have to constantly change your pedals on your indoor bike. Cool, well, moving on. Uh, and this really is a what the actual tech, uh, because this patent application from Ara Ohanian I mean, I've got a question, has Aero gone too far with this one? Uh, First, you have this kind of frame that attaches to the rear end of the bike. It looks like it's from the seat post, from the saddle, and it extends kind of this telescopic (laughs) mounts thing. Uh, Then things just keep getting weird because you've got the clothing itself. It almost has a tail that then attaches to this telescopic mount that comes out the back, which is meant to be more aero and good at your angles and all sorts of things like that. And not only that, that it's also got a patent application for a hoodie member, as it's called. Uh, so it's designed to create a sharp edge between the head and the shoulders of the rider, making the shoulders of the rider aerodynamic by streamlining. And I did read somewhere that it said it had sort of like pulleys inside and all sorts. So, wow. I mean, the chance of this thing ever coming to market are pretty uh, thin. And I mean, I can't even see the UCI ever accepting this. You don't think so? No. I I was very disappointed (laughs) to see this patent because back to the drawing board for me then. I mean, mean, even the very kind of free and accepting triathlon world might struggle to accept this Yeah, I mean, we don't have a famous, triathletes are not famous for our fashion sense, but even this is... I mean, imagine trying to play a line coming out of the swim and transition, I mean, Christ. You just have to hook it, hook it. I've got to put my hose on it, guys, wait for me. Uh, Got to get my wedgie hook on the back of my back there quickly. (laughs) I do like, though, people pushing the boundaries and trying new things and whether, you know, it, it comes to anything or not, you know, it gets people thinking and that's great. No word on how many watts it saves just yet, though. No. Uh, moving on though, we do have a very exciting update from Wahoo. It is called the Wahoo Summit Freeride feature. Yeah, this is pretty exciting. So essentially the Wahoo will detect climbs as you're riding up to them and be able to give you information such as how long, etc, etc. Now, people will be familiar with this when they've preloaded a route into their head unit before, it'll be able to do the same sort of thing. But the difference here is it'll work when you're free riding when you haven't got a route planned so i mean i've got to take my hats off to the developers on this one this is pretty phenomenal so you just head out as you ordinarily would on a ride and it will be able to tell you everything about the routes you're going on 
even if you haven't actually planned it. Yeah, so. the Summit Freeride, as you turn into a road, it'll say, well, this is a hill and it's going to carry on for three kilometers at 6%. And you can go, nope, and turn around <laughs> and go home. <laughs> or you go, I'm going to go for the KOM. And oh, you know exactly oh, how long oh, this yeah, is. That. You're supposed to, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, so that is available now. So if you have got a Wahoo, then you need to update it now because it's a pretty sweet feature. Yeah, it's available on the, on the V2 for both the Bolt and the Roam. So make sure you update those uh, so that you get that fancy new feature. Right, it's now giveaway time and our competition winners for the Magic 5 giveaway where you can win an indoor-outdoor bundle and the Magic 5 card game. So our winners are Kimberly Devere, Frank Sicoria, David Pinonso, Philomena Stula, Roland Findlay, Lisa McDonald, Sebastian Salas, Thomas Ronaldo, Oral Zucher, and Kerry Gray. And remember, we can't just send those straight to you because you've got to 3D scan your face. So we'll be in touch with details on how you can do that and get those goggles. Oh, that's exciting. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Prize that one. We have got another very exciting giveaway, though, too. This one now comes from Physique. This is for their Transero Hydra Aero Weave Carbon Shoes, which I featured in a video recently. Went out to the Italy HQ, Physique HQ out in Italy, and saw how they were made, the design of them all and everything involved in that. So do check that out if you haven't already. Uh, that competition is going to be running for the next couple of weeks and you just need to answer the question, what's the name of the series of physique products specifically designed for triathletes? So, Trot Zero. <laughs> uh, head to the link in the description down below and you can enter into that giveaway. Good luck. All right, now it's time to wrap up your triathlon race results from the last weekend. And actually, there weren't any triathlons the last weekend. At it was supposed yet. to be St. Anthony's triathlon, but due to weather conditions, it was changed to a duathlon. Uh, so your winner there was Paula Findlay. Yep, she cl claimed the crown ahead of Vittoria Lopez in second, Elisa Bicaris in third. On the men's side, another guy who's in a great form at the moment, Jason West took the win. Uh, obviously, the run duathlon suiting him <laughs> a lot there, two runs. Uh, and Matthew Sharp in second with Nicholas Quinnett from South Africa, actually, in third. Yeah, and now over in Ibiza with the World Multisport Champs, which is running in the lead up to and around, actually, the PTO European Open, we had the World Duathlon Champs and the World Aquathlon Champs. Of course, that is all that has happened at the moment. There's more happening this week, um, but at the time of filming, these are the only results we have. So the women's winner for the World Duathlon was none other than Emma Pallum, which is quite impressive, going from long-distance racing, or presumably she is focusing on long-distance racing, uh, to doing she a sprint distance. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, going to doing a sprint distance a duathlon, a 5k run followed by a 20k bike followed by a 2.5k run. So she took the win uh, ahead of Sinet Brag Bragmeyer and in third was Ayu uh, And then on the men's side, it was Mario Mola that took the win there, which is quite a surprising uh, win as he took that ahead of Benjamin Chocquet and Acrylian Le Behan, who both have placed first and second at the World and European Duathlon Champs in previous years. So um, quite, quite an impressive performance. I was quite surprised to see the World Duathlon Champions Championships happening over a sprint distance yes. duathlon. Is it the first time that's happened? I, I always thought that there was a, a full standard distance where it was a 10k run in a... You're putting me on the spot here, but um, I mean, I have done the World Duathlon Champs in the past and it definitely was an Olympic distance, mm. so I'm not sure when it's felt switched. Like it <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They've also had the World Aquathlon Champions Championships already in this multi-sport festival. Uh, the winner there, Zanette Brackmeyer, who was second in Duathlon World Championships, and on the men's side, Christian Fernandez Nieto from Spain took the win. Yeah, and as I've mentioned already, this weekend we've got the PTO European Open on Saturday 6th of May, which James is going to be out there featuring. You can also capture all the action over on the GCM Plus app. So if you aren't already subscribed to that, then definitely recommend doing that now. Um, you also, by doing that, you'll get access to all our videos, such as my Norseman video, my cycling across the channel, amongst all the other cycling videos, and all the cycling racing around the world. So there's a quite a lot more than just simply the PTO race this weekend in there. So Yeah, don't just go start watching cycling and never watch any more triathlon, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we are talking about the PTO European Open and it is building up to that. We are, Mark and I were, well, we're going to go out on a limb here and put our predictions. Now, a few people have already pulled out. 
we are asking the question. We've already joked about it. Is Jan and Alistair going to race? Are they going to make that start line? There's just a few more days. Apparently, they're all, all guns blazing for it. They're all wrapped up in cotton wool now, apparently. Uh, so hopefully, they make it. We are crossing our fingers because we would both love to see them racing, uh, especially against Christian Blumenfeld. If they do race, that'll be every Olympic gold medalist since 2008 oh, on the men's side, racing in the same race for the first time ever that all three of them have raced each other. So uh, yeah, we would like to see that. However, in our predictions, Mark and I are probably not too sure that that's actually going to happen. It me, meanwhile, though, me. yeah. Meanwhile, though, there have been some big name pullouts. One of them was Sam Ledlow, who put this post up this past week, uh, citing personal reasons uh, that he will not be racing the PTO European Open, which. It's a bit disappointing for a lot of people. They were looking to see how he went after his second place at Kona. Um, he cited personal reasons which maybe didn't read the room particularly well because uh, in the light of everything that's happened, there were a few people on social media who did jump on this unfairly, it must be said, uh, that he hasn't specified what the personal reasons are and you are well within your rights to pull out of a race for personal reasons. Uh, but given the timing, there was a little bit of backlash on social media which is not great to see uh whatever this personal reasons are we hope to see him racing again soon uh, yeah. also someone else who pulled out uh was on the start list but was never really committed to racing uh was cat matthews who won i'm in texas just last weekend yes yeah, so she's actually yeah she was on the world's long distance start list as well and it appears that she's now going to be focusing on that she's like heading out to ibiza now and racing that event which probably actually off the back of the ironman is a more suited event uh, albeit longer but less intense so yeah yeah a little slower a little <laughs> yeah. a little bit slower maybe so <laughs> come on then james uh predictions then for the men's and the women's top oh, three oh it's so difficult um okay for let's start with the men's mm -hmm. for the men's i'm going to go with Christian Blumfeld, because it's hard to look past Christian Blumfeld for first. Uh, not really sure how his training's been going in the off-season, but let's assume that he's been training really well. I'm going Christian Blumfeld first, Magnus Zitlev in second, uh, and in third place, I am going to say Jason West, because he is running incredibly well right now, and uh, yeah, I think he's going to run his way onto the podium. Annoyingly, I was going to go very similar, but I feel like I need to do something slightly different, so I've changed mine ever so slightly. So I've got Christian Blumfeld first. There's a little disclaimer in there. Jason West in second. Oh, he's running going to run, run his way second. through. He's running phenomenally. And then I think someone like Florian Anger in third. Mm, yeah. Fair shot. Interestingly, neither of us have those two men wrapped in cotton wool on our list at all here in the top three. I really uh, want to see Alistair. Yeah. Absolutely. The, blitz the heart wants those two really to go head to head really and be did. first and second. The head is going meh. Come on yeah. then, women. Okay. Woman, I am going with Daniel Arif. I mean, she's the goat. She, you, have, you can't look past her. She's going to be back. She's going to smash it. Daniel Reef for first. Tamara Jewett, who's running incredibly well, running her way up into second. And I'm going to go with Annie Haug, who's also running really well. Uh, she ran incredibly well at Grand Canaria a couple of weeks ago uh, to run herself up into third. Some similarities again, but I'm going to give Annie Haug the win. Lucy Ooh. Charles Barkley second. Mm -hmm. And then Tamara Jewett third. Also, oh, both going for the runners here, oh, interestingly. No. Well, uh, I'm sure you guys have your own predictions. You can drop them in the comment section and down below, and afterwards we'll give you a, a pat on the back if you're right. Yeah, and last week's show we discussed the PTO Athlete of the Month. Now, this is an initiative set up by the PTO to celebrate a male or female PTO athlete at the end of each calendar month based on outstanding performances, significant moving movement in the PTO world rankings and challenges overcome. Yep, and this person arguably has done all three of those in the same calendar month, uh, so you, you can't really look past them. And that person is, drum roll please, Kat Matthews. Yep, yeah. congratulations Kat Matthews, she is the PTO Athlete of the Month for April and yeah, I think well deserved too after her performance in, uh, in Texas on a comeback from a uh, bad accident and a significant mover up the PTO rankings. Tick, yeah. tick, tick. Now it's time to have a look at some of the stuff you guys have sent us over the last week. Remember, for the month of May, we are looking for your open water swimming adventures. So send us your video or photo of your first dip in the ice cold water in May. I went or, in this weekend. Oh, brave. It was cold. <laughs> Very cold. Yeah. Um, we're going to wait a couple more months, maybe three, maybe four, maybe next summer. Anyway, if you have headed into your water for the first time, 
use the uploader on screen right now and send us your pictures or videos of you heading into the water for the first time. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe you're trying to extend that uh, open water swimming season just a little bit longer uh, before it turns nasty and cold. <laughs> Either way, we'd love to see your videos, so drop them in. This week, we, uh, you guys have sent us these ones, starting with this one from Brady in Grapevine, Texas. He says, I am new to open water swimming and find it very intimidating, particularly in the murky, muddy waters we have here in North Texas. My buddy Spencer offered to swim with me a few times in preparation for upcoming Olympic distance Cap Tex Triathlon in Austin on May 29th. We jumped right into the first session on March 25th. Nice. And this Talk almost reminds yeah, this almost <laughs> reminds me of some of those videos you see on social media, mm -hmm. like kook slams and stuff like that, where they get their foot stuck and they slip off the top. Yeah. Thankfully, I didn't. He happen, didn't fail. No, he did jump no. in. Well done. Uh, good stuff. Next one from Dominic uh, from Northern Ireland. Oh, I can imagine this is cold. Swimming in Northern uh, Ireland. Yeah, it's a, just not setting or breaking any records. <laughs> First swim of the season. This is the Atlantic Ocean. It was a tad cold, like eight degrees Celsius. <laughs> but helped by the sunshine. I mean, was it helped by the sunshine? <laughs> I mean, I swam in 10 degrees Celsius at the weekend, and I was, I mean, I didn't last long. I'm gonna be honest, I was yes, out brave. there. And, yeah, brave, yeah. yeah. And then brave. we have Emily who sent us this one from Caversham Lakes. Freezing first swim of the season, training for Blenheim Palace Sprint and London Triathlon Olympic distance, and she is out there in the open water getting ready for that. So yeah, yeah don't worry, yeah, that commitment work. will pay off, I promise. I've gotta say, it is really hard at the moment. People are trying to prep for these races in sort of a month's time, thinking, I need to get in the open water. but. It's freezing! It is freezing. So, oh, what do you do? <laughs> it's been a long old winter. Uh, next one from Baba. Um, he's doing a practice swim the day before their race in Taupo, New Zealand. And it looks like an amazing setting. It does look amazing. Look, look how it. smooth that water is. That is incredible. Oh, nice. And then finally, we had this one from Neil. This isn't a swim-related one. Well, it is, because he's coming out of the swim within a triathlon. Um, and he titled this Brick Session, and you'll see ah. why on the video. Uh, when he exited the pool and uh, he gripped hold of the wall as he ran round it and literally took a brick with him from that wall. <laughs> so, um, yeah, good work there. Um, yeah. Superman wants his arm back. Nice. Uh, well, yeah, do keep those videos and photos coming in of you open water swimming. Use that photo upload link on screen right now or in the description just down below. All right, now it's time for our new section called Say What? Where we comment on... Is that how you say it? Or do you go, say what? No? Uh, no. Uh, what he said. I think we need it. Yeah, we need to... <laughs> dial this for next week yeah, yeah we do we need to practice that anyway it's called say what uh so we're going to look at what you said on one of our videos and uh well dig down a little bit into it and you know read the comment out and then discuss it a little bit and sean wrote on mark's uh wind tunnel video ground quite speed... a few times i might add actually <laughs> he was adamant he was adamant on this point i'm going to read his comment he says ground speed and airspeed are not the same thing sure most cyclists aren't cruising at 45 kilometers an hour but most cyclists also aren't cycling in a vacuum with no headwind or crosswinds a cyclist going 24 kilometers an hour into a 21 kilometer hour headwind has a net 45 kilometer an hour airspeed going over their equipment and that assumes a steady wind not a more realistic gusting swirling pattern that the real world tends to have when you account for real world wind conditions higher speed tests are just as if not more valid this is obviously because mark did his wind speed test at 30 kilometers an hour so this guy was saying mark you've done it wrong yeah well i did do it at 30 and 45 kilometers an hour just to add but i do I want to say, like, obviously, Sean put this comment in a few times under the comments, and I really welcome it. It was a fantastic um, kind of it opened a great debate, really, and uh, really welcome these. Um, I was going to put my clever hat on and try and answer this myself. You left this uh, clever hat at home. Yeah, right? I left my clever hat at home most days, actually. <laughs> uh, instead, I thought I'd actually ask the experts out Silverstone, who are far more qualified in this area, uh, and they said the main advantage of wind tunnel testing over outdoor testing is that it is a controlled environment uh, with fewer variables, allowing for repeatable testing, which in turn makes it easier to identify, have confidence in the difference between sort of A versus B. Uh, the wind tunnel will replicate a given wind speed at a given your angle representative to crosswind. However, we cannot account for swirling or gusting wind as this goes against the objective of keeping variables controlled for accurate results. And I guess you could go on to say, you know, it's a smooth surface and the drag that the air is kind of um, passing over that surface is different to perhaps a bumpy road. It's going to be minimal, right? Uh, so yes, yeah, sure, you're correct. However, um, it does not make wind tunnel test completely void and null and uh, redundant. In fact, it actually is, as um, 
our experts have said, it is more accurate than testing out on the road because you can repeat and there are less variables involved. So. There you have it, Sean. Uh, remember, we in welcome your discussions below any of our videos. It, uh, we do read your comments and we do engage in them when we can. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in something or have a point to make or something to say on one of our videos, remember, leave it in the comment section down below or below this one. If you have something to say about our, our show today, and that is it for the show. Uh, coming up on the channel, we have some PTO highlights coming up this week. And also, we are going to look at the coronation because it's the king's coronation this week yeah we're having it? a little bit of fun with the coronation yeah. we thought we need to celebrate this we want to celebrate it but how do we celebrate it yeah. uh so stay tuned yeah. I, think, I think it's gonna be a good one <laughs> i think it's gonna be a good one yeah we did try our best i'm yeah. impressed you yeah. really tried hard. <laughs> well uh, we, you yeah <laughs> subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video coming out this weekend if you're looking for something to watch right now last weekend I built Belinda, our new creator, a uh, bike. A, yeah. Not just any old bike, a very fast looking eBay bike. Yeah. Off of eBay, and uh, yeah, I did the paintwork myself. So uh, yeah, <laughs> head over there and click that video because it's, uh, well, I th I'm pretty proud of it. You're going to say a work of art, weren't you? Uh, well, I was trying not to, but now, <laughs> now that you've said it. 